decide we can't even keep track of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> It's wonderful, isn't it? Awesome. If you're a visitor with us today, inside your worship folder you find a little care card. If you wouldn't mind filling that out with your information, it just gives us a chance to respond to your visit with us today. So we would appreciate that. Thank you so much. You can drop that in the offering plate or hand it to one of the ushers or somebody after service, and we'll make sure that we get that in the right, in the right spot. But thank you so much. And uh, I just wanted to make a... a Next Sunday, some of you may have gotten that weekly email. Uh, at least I didn't get any phone calls, so I'm sure some of you got it this week, which is great. But next Sunday, we have a unique opportunity for us. Our uh, The church plant that we've been a part of and trying to help with uh, Mike and Don Wheeler and the, the church plant in Edwardsville, they've been going for a year, and uh, they one of their first converts is wanting to be baptized. Which is a wonderful thing. They were planning a baptism service for next Sunday, the 15th. And the family, they have family coming in from around different places. And they made t-shirts to celebrate this baptism. And they already have the date on the shirts. And so they can't change the date. And in the process of all this planning for this baptism service... Pastor Don Bird, who we talked about, who's the pastor a few weeks ago, who just all of a sudden passed away, had a heart attack right at the end of the service of their of church. And he, that was the pastor who's been a part of the funding, money funding for the church plant. And he had everything worked out with Pastor Mike and Don about their baptism service. He's planning everything with them. He's going to be with them. Had a, a portable baptismal coming. When he passed away, nobody knew who he was talking to. Nobody had any information. They didn't know where they, where they were going to get that. And so they were in a panic mode. And I met with them uh, this week, this last past week. And they, I, you know, I don't even know what I'm doing. He was doing the service for me. I don't even, I've never done a baptism service before. So just, oh, I said, don't worry about it. We'll help you out. So we're going to open our service. We're going to, they're going to come and be a part of us. And uh, I, I asked him to preach. He said, oh, no, I don't think I can do that. So so I'll give the explanation and like we do for baptisms. And then the, they will baptize. Their, uh, and so if anybody else is interested in baptism, please let me know. We have a week to prepare. It'd be nice. But uh, at least to be here to help celebrate this, this new uh, church that's getting planted and their uh, new convert that's getting baptized. And so that will be uh, next Sunday. That would be a great opportunity next Sunday, and that would be for our regular service. And then that afternoon is the uh, next Sunday is the baby shower for Anna and Tyrone and their uh, their twins that are coming soon. So next Sunday will be a great a great day. So you won't, won't want to miss being here and uh, being a part of the celebration of a new convert coming into in the family of God as we uh, as we help them out. So just putting that word out there. For you. So thank you. Our ushers will come at this time as we receive our tithes and offerings and then you give as we give liberally and cheerfully unto the Lord today. Uh, Brother Claude, ask the blessing for the offering.
to do prayer to come before the Lord in prayer. Brother Jerry, I'm going to ask Brother Jerry to come and lead us in prayer if he would. But as we, uh, we have prayer today, these altars are open for whatever burden it is you may be carrying, whatever, uh, maybe it was a victory that you're rejoicing in, whatever the case may be, these altars. I, I, I want us to keep this attitude of always having an open altar and uh, coming before the Lord in prayer and having the, the family the family prayer time be a time that uh, helps us to draw closer to one another. That just because someone is here at the, at the altar doesn't mean that, they're, that there's a problem with them unless it's something that we don't judge about. It's something that we come beside and alongside of to support prayer.
Father, we praise your precious name this morning for all of that. Father, there are needs gathered around this altar this morning, Lord. I don't know what they are. Father, you do. I don't know what the answers are for them, but you do. And Father, you also know what your answer is going to be for them as well. Father, just move in. Surround your people, Lord. You, you, you promised us that you would inhabit the praise of your people, Lord. And we have done our best to praise you this morning. You stand on the promise that you are here. That you have heard and you are hearing. And Father, you've known before we even asked this morning what was needed. So Father, come and wrap your arms of love around these folks at the altar. Out here in the sanctuary, Lord, those who, who just couldn't be here this morning, whatever reason, Lord, go and wrap your arms of love around them and let them know that you do care in a world that seems uncaring. Lord. We need your touch. So once again, Lord, I give you what you're doing even this moment, let alone what you've done all our lives. So now, Father, I ask that you anoint, not just hold us, but anoint us with you, with your word, with your power, with your grace, that we can leave here this morning knowing we've been loved. Father, once again, I give you praise. I ask all that I ever do, Lord Jesus. I ask in your mighty, precious name. Amen. Amen.
You'll find out why in a minute. But if we don't stand for something, we'll fall for anything. It's time more than ever before that God's people need to make a stand. Amen. Yeah. Let's say our motto together. Heavenly Father, I give you permission to speak to me, to speak through me, to do whatever you want with my heart. I trust the leadership of your Holy Spirit. Our scripture this morning is found in Ephesians chapter 6. You're all familiar with this scripture. And I thought about it, prayed about it, just couldn't get released from it because it's taking a different twist today. You're all familiar with it. It's on the armor of God. But there's a few things that I looked at in looking at the armor that I just really hadn't thought of, even in Sunday school as a kid. And in different things as growing up and teaching. So let's read this together. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. So how many times is there situations of panic do we hear don't just stand there, do something. And then there it is. People are running around like headless chickens. Doing something but too often not really achieving anything. And there's several stories in the Bible that remind me of this same thing and I think of two of them when taking a stand. First, of course, is the three Jesus children. Don't just stand there, bow, or in other words, bend or burn, is what they say. And you remember, they stood for their God, for their faith, and the truth. But one you probably don't really think about was the story in Luke 10 of Mary and Martha. Jesus said it well, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. And Mary has chosen the best part, which will not be taken away from her. Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and just listened. Too often, we could become doers. We want to get things done and get it done now. And those who think don't just stand there, do something. I'm one of those. I like to get it done. I don't like to leave a task unfinished or waste time doing nothing. Well, all through scripture we read, be still, take time, wait, and the list goes on. It's really time we learn to just sit at the feet of Jesus and listen. Yes. To rely and depend on the leading of the Holy Spirit to direct us in everything we do. Whether it's in our workplace, whether it's in school, our families, or even in our worship. It's not about us. 
It's all about Him. So how do we stand in these days where it seems like we're living smack dab in the middle of Sodom and Gomorrah? Right. Everywhere you look, there's hate, sin, there's false religions, false teachings. How do you take a stand for God, for our faith, and for our truth? Well, let's look real quick at Ephesians. And starting with verse 10 and 11, it comes from the strength within. Between verses 10 and 14, three times the word stand is said. I take it that must be important. Doing it on our, this doesn't mean that doing it on our own is going to work. The strength for us the body of Christ for Christians is resting and standing upon the promises of God. It's the power of His might working in us. By His strength we put on His armor and we can stand against anything the devil throws at us. You've heard me say that many times. But it's true. There was a minister traveling on a train in Europe, and he thought he was the only one in the car at the time, and there was a young man sitting off in the corner, a young teenager. He was reading a newspaper. But the teenager was kind of weak. He wasn't really too excited about his Christian walk right now. Uh, he had a lot of temptations. And so the minister asked him, well, is, are you okay, young man? Would you like to talk? He told the minister that he didn't think he'd be able to stand life for another week. And the minister took from his pocket a small Bible and a pen knife, which a pen knife's about this big, and said, see, I'll make this knife stand up on the cover of this Bible. Even in spite of the rocking of the train back and forth. So the young man, thinking that this was some trick, watched the proceeding with interest, saying, I don't think that's going to be very easy to do, sir. Oh, but this minister said, I'm doing it. But you're holding it, the young man said. Why, of course, did you ever hear of a pen knife standing up on its end without being held up? Oh, I get it, the teenager said. You mean to teach me that I cannot stand unless Christ holds me. Amen. Thanks for reminding me of that. That's true for us, too. We cannot stand unless Christ holds us. When Christ holds us and we put on His armor, we are putting on Christ. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, even if it means just taking a stand. <coughs> In verse 12, number 2 is the enemy without. It is important to know at all times who our enemy is. Who it is that we're fighting. Because we're not fighting each other. We're not fighting against each other. We are fighting Satan and the darts that Satan throws. Ezekiel 28 says, We see how God threw Satan out of heaven because of pride. And ever since Satan was thrown out of heaven, he's been seeking every opportunity to discredit God. 1 Peter 5.8 says, Our adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion, walking around seeing who he can devour. You see, it was Satan that deceived Eve in the Garden of Eden. It was Satan who touched the life of Job. It was Satan who tempted Christ in the wilderness. It's Satan who wreaks havoc on the church and Christ's people. And it is Satan who we must stand against. 
and it's Him alone. If we're not totally committed to Christ, to His calling on our lives, to His grace and mercy that He has given to us, our flesh wants the old life back, the world wants to drag us back to that, and Satan tries to make sure that plan works. Remember those times? Don't anybody throw anything at me. But remember those times when you're so tired, I just really don't want to go to church today. And you roll back over and turn your arm off. Or, you know, I am so busy today. I'm sorry, God. I just don't have time to read your word today. Or, I'm so tired, I can't even pray tonight. Or, I just don't feel like doing that today. I wonder what would have happened if Christ had not felt like dying on the cross. To rescue us from our old lives and to give us a new life. The world is one big temptation. And Satan is out to disrupt our lives, distract us, and ultimately destroy us. He's the one who wants us to be weak and feeble and ineffective. He's the one who tells us, you need to rely on God. The grass is greener on the other side anyway. And why do you want to grow spiritually? I can give you everything that you want. Well, that's not the case. And if you've ever been one of those that has said, I want to see if the grass is greener on the other side. If they don't water it any more than you do, their grass is going to look like yours. <laughs> it's not greener on the other side. It's time we take a stand together against the one we really need to fight. James 4 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Hallelujah. Number three, the weapons we needed. Here comes the meat of the sermon. Remember, we can't take on Satan on our own strength. That's like putting out a house, house fire with a water pistol. Or it's trying to slay a lion with a fly swatter. Or better yet, it's trying to catch an elephant with a butterfly net. It, we can't do it. We have to put on the whole armor of God and stand and see God work. Amen. Exodus 14, 13 to 14. Moses said unto the people, fear not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will show to you. For the Egyptians you have seen today, you will not see them ever again. For the dark Satan threw at you today, stand firm, you'll never see him again. That's how I read that. First it says to put on the belt of truth, which is in verse 14a. Truth is the foundation on which everything is built. It's the belt that holds all things together. Can you imagine if those uh, military guys, those soldiers went into army and did not have their belt on? They dropped their drawers. Their trousers would fall down. I'm about ready to go find about that big of belts and pass them out to some guys I know. Because <laughs> they need them. And then I'll share a story about the belt of the truth. But the belt leaves us free and flexible. It makes you able to run and walk because you're not going to trip over your pants that fall down. There's no constraints. There's no chains. Everything in our spiritual life is fastened together by the belt of truth. Satan is the father of lies, and Hitler himself said that if you told a lie long enough, people are going to believe it. John 14, 6 says, He is the way, the truth, and the life. Next is the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate guards the whole body. I did not know that when those soldiers used the, the breastplate, it covered a third of their body. Plus, those behind them, or beside them. 
covered their body and a third of the person beside them. Can you imagine? That thing was huge. No wonder David didn't want to use it. He was little. But you see, Satan attacks us at every point of our emotions, our self-worth, and our trust. And God protects, the righteousness protects our hearts. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For God hath made Christ to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are made righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ. Next is the shoes of peace in verse 15. Your feet prepared to share the gospel of peace. The good news. So you must be fully prepared. Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Standing firm. Then we have the shield of faith in verse 16. The shield soaked in covering so that the flaming arrows of the enemy would not hit them. And when they throw those arrows, they'd be put out because they couldn't withstand the water. Our shield is faith. Without faith, it's impossible. Without faith, everything is impossible. The helmet of salvation, the helmet protects the head. I need one of those when I'm weedy. Have you ever done that? You weed eat and everything that you're weed eating hits you right here. <laughs> the helmet protects the head. The helmet also protects the mind from doubting God's saving work in us, through us, and for us. The helmet of salvation is a receiving gift of God's grace. Amen. The sword of the Spirit in verse 17b, the Word of God. There is only one piece for offense, and it's this. Amen. This is our only piece of armor used for offense. Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than a two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. A sword is only effective when it is used properly. Jesus used the sword, the word of God, in response to those temptations of Satan in the wilderness. Jesus used the word of God in all of his teachings, his dealings. And the last is prayer. Prayer is like calling in the military during battle. It's such a powerful weapon and an important part of our spiritual walk and not just when you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. I don't think too many of us thought about prayer being one of the spiritual armors, mm -hmm. armor of God. But you see, prayer is not just individual. Prayer is corporate. Prayer is for people who may not physically be able to do much else. Yeah. But everybody can be prayer warriors. Yeah. That's right. And if physically you're not able to do anything to help someone else, you can pray. Yeah. Because prayer touches heaven. Yeah. And prayer changes people. Yeah. Prayer changes situations. Prayer doesn't change things because this is a thing. But prayer changes situations and prayer changes people. Yes. And prayer changes us. Yes. I feel like all of this is to remember and to remind us that we as Christians, we see through kinder eyes like Jesus. Or we give from a bigger heart like God. We speak with a purer tongue like Christ. We serve with willing hands like Jesus. We walk with a great faith like our Lord. We love with the love of God the Father. 
We think with a spiritual mind like Christ. We see the needs of others with compassion just like Christ. Amen. We are used to heal the wounds with love like the Master. We are different because Jesus is number one in our lives. Amen. Our armor is a protection against the enemy himself. So the challenge is that we need to stand in that armor, the living Christ. Job 1.10, Satan himself describes how God protects his own. Have you not made a hedge around him and his household and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. Satan is not dumb. Satan knows exactly what God does for his people, for his children. And he tries to take it away from us, just like if we hang around with the wrong crowd. Or if we make choices on our own without thinking of them first. Romans 8.33, what shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. Everybody needs to memorize that scripture in 8.31. That's a good one to use if Satan's tempting you or testing you or keeps bugging you. If God is for us, who can be against us? No one can take away the joy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then in the last part of Hebrews 6, he writes, And pray for me too, ask God to give me the right words so I can boldly explain God's mysterious plan that the good news is for Jews and Gentiles alike. Pray that I will keep on speaking boldly for Him as I should. That would be my prayer that I would leave with you is that you would pray with me and for me that I continue to speak boldly His Word Amen. to everyone I come in contact with. And, you know, it, just something to throw in there. I never thought of the armor of God in the Old Testament. Did you know it was in the Old Testament? Master, did you know? No? <laughs> no, yeah, no. <laughs> I didn't think about it. But just... In case you want to jot these down, in Jeremiah 46, 3, 4, he already says, prepare your shield, <laughs> prepare for battle, take on your possessions, sharpen your spears, get prepared. You've got Isaiah 11, 5 with the belt, Isaiah 59, 17 for the helmet of salvation and breastplate. Isaiah 52, 7, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the messenger who brings good news. The good news of peace and salvation. The news that God of Israel reigns. Just like we sang this morning, our God reigns. Praise the Lord, He reigns. Amen. Shield of faith in Proverbs 30, the sword of the Spirit. How blessed are you, O Israel, in Deuteronomy 33, 29. This is becoming one of my other favorites. How blessed you are, O Israel. Who else is like you? A people saved by the Lord. He is your protecting shield and your triumphant sword. Your enemies will cringe before you and you will stomp on their backs. Amen. Now you can take that to the bank. Because it comes from His Word. Amen. So we can remember... That it's because of His grace, which is sufficient for all our needs and in everything that we need and we face. And in closing, I've asked the praise team to come up and lead us in this long-time Southern Gospel hymn, His grace is sufficient for me.
Andy, for challenging us in that message this morning. And uh, we take it to heart, for sure. And we know that she's going to have that confidence and that boldness as she goes to Carrollton, and we need to pray for them. <laughs> as we uh, as we end our time, we want to ask Pastor Candy to come, and she'll uh, probably sit here on the altar as we gather around her and pray over her as we send her off, and kind of our tradition around here. And I was at a district meeting here a uh, week before last, and uh, they were talking about different things and came up about uh, you know, here about Pastor Michelle and about Pastor Kyle and they brought up uh, you know several and I'm like yeah you're welcome and, <laughs> and, and, Pat, and Candace Wiley is going to be going to Carrollton, Missouri and we've got a couple others that are like I just said, yeah, in a church that uh, Bruce and Shirley are looking at and, and I said yeah you're welcome for all those uh, you know, <laughs> we seem to be the, the anyway like, now you're going to have to help fill us. Bring us some more help. But, uh, but we're, what a delight it's been. So I want us to gather around Pastor Candy as we send her off. And, and, uh, and as we talked about earlier, to eat together afterwards that, uh, that God will, will, as He has called her, God will provide for us as well. Yeah. And so we, we surround her with, with peace and love. Father God, we thank you for your goodness today. Thank you for this message that has been that Pastor Candy shared with us today, and she shared with her heart. Thank you for that. Now I pray, Lord, that we are thankful for what she is, how she has endeared herself to us, and so many of us have drawn closer to to her and the, and the Wiley family. That now uh, it's it's time to share, and we send her off to Carrollton, Missouri, where you called her. Lord, it's uh, we have we have mixed emotions. We uh, well, we realize that there's it's like she said earlier. It's not about us. It's about you. And it's about your kingdom. It's about your word. Yes. And as you uh, as you call her there, you will you will see fit to fill to fill the void here, to fill the hole that's here. We we trust you for that. But Lord, I just pray that you would take Pastor Candy and you would surround her with your with your armor, Lord, that we would uphold her as well, and we would be faithful in lifting her to you, and that you, she will be faithful to your word and faithful to your people. There she leads them well. Lord, just surround her with your undergirding, I pray. Give her strength, give her courage. As she talked about speaking with boldness, give her that courage, Lord, I pray. And we, we would be behind her in prayer as well, knowing that you are faithful, ever faithful. And you will help her, and you will be with her. So, Lord, just uh, use her, I pray. And may may more soul, may the church be uh, strengthened there and, and Carol, and may more souls be added and folks added to the church and to the kingdom through her ministry and the ministry of Carrollton Church. Lord, we thank you. For that. So we just we pray, Lord, that you would bless her. Now go with her as we surround her with our love, and you would surround her with grace. And Lord, together this this day would as it's. A bittersweet moment, but we're thankful that you have called and she's answered the call and you have, you've placed this upon her. Lord, we just ask as we lay our hands upon her that you would, you would strengthen her, Lord, yes, but use her. We ask for your anointing upon her from yes. on high that the Holy Spirit would flow through her yes. to the folks in Carrollton. And what you will do as we receive reports and as we talk to her from time to time, well, we, we just know that you're going to work out some great things. So, Lord, we, we do that. And we give you the praise for it all. We give you glory and honor. In the strong name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 No, it's north. It's, you know, we go up by... Uh, you know where Cameron, Missouri is? Missouri on Highway 36 takes straight over. Oh, 
Thank you. 